Good day, everyone. My name is Dr. David Amron. I'm the host of Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge, and welcome. Today's segment is going to be about diagnosing lipedema. And lipedema is really not that difficult to diagnose. This is one of the craziest things. We're going to talk about this. It's based on signs, symptoms, and family history. But the first question I like to ask patients when I do a consultation with my patients is, how did you hear of the term lipedema? and how was that? And I'm gonna tell you that probably 80% of patients have self-diagnosed themselves. They have found about it through their own research and somehow come across that term lipedema. They weren't necessarily diagnosed by a doctor or diagnosed by somebody. They really self-diagnosed themselves. And, and they go on looking at things like painful legs or swollen legs, and things are just not making sense to them in terms of their, their therapy. Many times they've tried many different things, weight loss therapy, weight loss surgery, which we're gonna talk about, um, vein treatments that didn't work in, with things, um, and things were just not making sense for them. So they go on the internet, which is a great thing these, these days because there, there is a lot of information there. As much as it bothers me with my children being on it too much, um, it is a great tool, the internet and there's a lot of information to find. And there's more information nowadays about lipedema, which is a great thing. So they go on the internet and they come across this term lipedema. And it's always the same sort of thing. They, they, they tell me that they come across this term and it's almost like a, like a weird feeling that they found something, they've uncovered something in, in, their, in their detective work. And I call this the aha moment, when it's like, aha, all of this stuff that I've been going through, all of these years and all of these things and suffering now finally make sense to me. And they start to put that puzzle together for themselves. And that's the way lipidema is typically diagnosed, unfortunately. It's not diagnosed by, by others as much or by doctors as much. Um, this is why we need to be teaching more and more doctors about it, teaching pediatricians about it, teaching OBGYNs about it. They should be diagnosing at a young age, at puberty, when it presents. So as much as possible can be done to prevent this disease and slow the progression of it. We're going to talk about this in a future segment. But basically I was saying there's three areas that lipedema is, is uh, diagnosed um, around. There, there are no clinical tests for it. There's no blood test for lipedema. We're starting to understand the genetics of it. Um, but there's three areas. The number one area are the signs of lipedema. In medicine, we, we have areas we call signs and symptoms. The signs of lipedema are a characteristic look to lipedema. Most of the consultations I do are patients from around the country, around the world, that send photographs that I look at. And, and that quickly you can diagnose it when you get accustomed to the characteristic look of lipedema. The signs of lipedema are that there is a, a generally a circumferential swelling to, to certain areas on the body. There's a column-like look to the legs. So again, it's, it's a characteristic look to lipedema. There are different stages of lipedema, one through four, and it's a, it's a, it's a continuum. Uh, I've, I've even called some patients stage zero. It's so mild in some patients, you can barely even appreciate it and diagnose it, but when you get a very tuned and accustomed to it, you do diagnose it as very mild lipedema. And at the other end of the spectrum is stage four lipedema, which is very advanced. Um, each stage has its characteristic look to it. In, as you move from stage one to stage two, you get more um, cellulitic changes in the tissue. And stage three and stage four are more advanced versions of that. So those are the signs of lipedema. The symptoms are a variety of symptoms with lipedema. Commonly, commonly pain, typically a sensitivity of pressure that patients have. Sometimes they describe it as an achiness or even a burning uh, in their tissues. Swelling is common. Easy bruisability is common. And then most patients have a history of hyperflexibility of their joints or hypermobility of their skin, variations of a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And then many other patients can have other coexisting things like leaky gut syndrome or brain fog that goes along with lipedema. There almost always is a family history of lipedema. And we're gonna talk about this specifically in a future segment, the genetics and the pattern of inheritance. Um, but there is almost always a family history, either the mother's side or the father's side of the family. It's not that difficult to diagnose, like I was saying. And so once you become accustomed to it and you understand the way it looks, 
and the symptoms, that's a diagnosis of lipedema. So this whole series is about increasing awareness for lipedema, understanding, increasing education. Like I say, knowledge is, is power and it allows you to take control of things that are going on. So welcome to Lippy Logic. Thanks for tuning into this segment. I'm Dr. David Amron, the host of Lippy Logic.